you wrote a post about levels of lucidity. Quote, as we grow older, it becomes apparent that our self-reflexive mind is not just gradually accumulating ideas about itself, but that it progresses in somewhat distinct stages. So there's seven of the stages. Stage one, reactive survival, infant. Stage two, personal self, young child. Stage three, social self, adolescence, domesticated adult. Stage four is rational agency, self-direction. Stage five is self-authoring. That's full adult. You've achieved wisdom, but there's two more stages. Stage six is enlightenment. Stage seven is transcendence. Can you explain each or the interesting parts of each of these stages? And what's your sense why there are stages of this, uh, of lucidity as we progress through life in this too short life? This model is derived from a concept by the psychologist Robert Keegan. And he talks about the development of the self as a process that happens in principle by some kind of reverse engineering of a mind, where you gradually become aware of yourself and thereby build structure that allows you to interact deeper with the world and yourself. And I found myself using this model not so much as a developmental model. I'm not even sure if it's a very good developmental model because I saw my children not progressing exactly like that. And um, I also suspect that you don't go through these stages necessarily in succession. And it's not that you work through one stage and then you get into the next one. Sometimes you revisit them. Sometimes stuff is happening in parallel. But it's, I think, a useful framework to look at what's present in the structure of a person and how they interact with the world and how they relate to themselves. So uh, it's more like a philosophical framework that allows you to talk about how minds work. And at first, when we are born, we don't have a personal self yet, I think. Instead, we have an attentional self. And this attentional self is initially in the infant tasked with building a world model and also an initial model of the self. But mostly it's building a game engine in the brain that is tracking sensory data and uses it to explain it. And in some sense, you could compare it to a game engine like Minecraft or so, so colors and sounds. Um, people are all not physical objects. They are a creation of our mind at a certain level of coarse graining. Models that are mathematical, that use uh, geometry and um, that uh, use manipulation of objects and so on to create scenes in which we can find ourselves and interact with them. So Minecraft. <laughs> yeah, and this personal self is something that is more or less created after the world is finished, after it's trained into the system, after it has been constructed. And this personal self is an agent that interacts with the outside world. And the outside world is not the world of quantum mechanics, the, not the physical universe, but it's the model that has been generated in our own mind. right? And this is us, and we experience ourselves interacting is that outside world that is created outside of our own mind. And outside of ourself, there's feelings and they, they be presented our interface to this outside world. They pose problems to us. These feelings are basically attitudes that our mind is computing that tell us what's needed in the world, the things that we are drawn to, the things that we are afraid of. And we are tasked with solving this problem of satisfying the needs, avoiding the aversions, following on our inner commitments and so on, and uh, also modeling ourselves and building the next stage. So after uh, we have this personal self in stage two online, uh, many people form a social self. And this social self allows the individual to experience themselves as part of a group. It's basically this thing that when you are playing in a team, for instance, you don't notice yourself just as a single note that is reaching out into the world, but you're also looking down. You're looking down from this entire group and you see how this group is looking at this individual and everybody in the group is in some sense emulating this group spirit to some degree. And in this state, people are forming their opinions by assimilating them from this group mind. They basically gain the ability to act a little bit like a hive mind. But do you, are you also modeling the interaction of how opinions shapes and forms through the interaction of the individual nodes within the group? Yeah, it's basically the, the way in which people do it in this stage is that they experience what are the opinions of my environment. They experience the relationship that they have to their environment and uh, they resonate with people around them mm -hmm. and um, get more opinions in this through this interaction, through um the way in which they relate to others. 
And at stage four, you basically understand that stuff is true and false independently of what other people believe. And you have agency over your own beliefs in that stage. You basically discover epistemology, the rules about determining what's true and false. So you can you start to learn how to think. Yes. I mean, at some level, you're always thinking, you are constructing things. And I believe that this ability to reason about your mental representation is what we mean by thinking. It's an intrinsically reflexive process that requires consciousness. Without consciousness, you cannot think. You can generate the content of feelings and so on outside of consciousness. It's very hard to be conscious of how your feelings emerge, at least in the early stages of development. But um, thoughts is something that you always control. Mm -hmm. And if you are a nerd like me, you often have to skip stage three because you lack the intuitive empathy with others. Because in order to resonate with a group, you need to have a quite similar architecture. And if people are wired differently, then it's hard for them to resonate with other people and basically have um, empathy, which is not the same as compassion, but it is a shared perceptual mental state. Empathy happens not just via inference about the mental states of others, but it's a perception of what other people feel and where they're at. Can't you not have empathy while also not having a similar architecture, cognitive architecture as the others in the group? I think, yes, but you have, well, I experienced that too, but you need to build something that is like a meta-architecture. You need hmm. to be able to embrace the architecture of the other to some degree or, oh, or find some shared common ground. And uh, it's also this issue that uh, if you are a nerd, normies often, so people, I say neurotypical people, have difficulty to resonate with you. Mm -hmm. And as a result, they have difficulty understanding you uh, unless they have enough wisdom to, to feel what's going on there. 